The genesis of aviation history occurred in 1970 in the cocktail lounge of Boston's Ritz-Carlton Hotel. Three French executives approached GE Aerospace with a groundbreaking proposal to collaborate on building a new turbofan engine in the 20,000-pound thrust class for the single-aisle commercial jet market. Ed Wall, who attended the meeting with company president Gerhard Neumann and corporate counsel Jim Sachs, would later recall, you could have bowled us over with a feather. This meeting wasn't entirely unexpected. Following the launch of the CF-66 wide-body engine program in 1967, GE Aerospace had secured customer orders for the McDonnell Douglas DC-10 and a year later, Airbus's new A300 passenger jet. By 1969, GE Aerospace and Safran Aircraft Engines, then SNECMA, had established a revenue-sharing arrangement for producing engine parts for CF-650-powered DC-10s and A300s in Europe. At the 1971 Paris Air Show, a pivotal meeting occurred between Neumann and Safran Aircraft Engines' new president, René Ravaud. Neumann, who had left Germany in the late 1930s and served as an airplane mechanic with the American Volunteer Group, Flying Tigers, in China during World War II, found an immediate connection with Ravaud, a World War II hero who had lost his right arm during the 1944 Allied bombing of Brest Harbor. As Newman would later write, he and I clicked from the very first moment we met. The path to partnership faced numerous obstacles. Initially, the U.S. government rejected GE's application to export its F-101 engine corps for joint commercial development as it powered the U.S. Air Force B-1 bomber. However, with support from U.S. President Richard Nixon, the government eventually approved, and in 1974, CFM International was officially established as a 50-50 joint venture. The name CFM combined GE's CF commercial turbofan with Safran's M from M56, their original engine designation. Despite successful ground and flight testing, the CFM 56 engine went five years without an application. In March 1979, just two weeks before the program's potential suspension, salvation came when United Airlines, Delta Airlines, and Flying Tiger Cargo Line ordered the CFM 56-2 to re-engine 110 McDonnell Douglas DC-8 aircraft, creating the DC-8 Super 70 series. The momentum continued into 1980 when the United States Air Force selected the CFM 56-2, designated F-108 for military use, to re-engine its KC-135 refueling tankers, with the French Air Force following suit. The following year, Boeing chose the CFM 56-3 as the sole power plant for its new 737-300, requiring innovative engineering to accommodate the engine's design. The accessory gearbox was moved to the side, creating the iconic oval shape of the CFM-powered 737 nacelle. By 2000, almost 4,000 CFM 56-3 engines had been produced for the 737 Classic Series. April 1982 marked the official entry into service when a Delta Airlines DC-8 Super 70 made its first commercial flight from Atlanta to Savannah. Two years later, Airbus launched the A320 with the CFM 56-5A, introducing the first full-authority digital electronic control system in a CFM engine. The CFM 56-5A entered service on the A320 with Air France in 1988, and the following year, Airbus launched the stretched A321, powered by the CFM 56-5B. In 1993, the CFM 56-7B was launched as the sole engine for Boeing's next-generation 737 series, starting with Southwest Airlines. This model achieved the fastest fleet ramp-up in commercial aviation history until the Leap Engine's introduction in 2016. By 1999, CFM 56-7-powered Boeing 737s became the first single-aisle commercial jets to receive 180-minute extended-range twin-engine operations performance standards, or the ETOPS approval. At the 2008 Farnborough Air Show, CFM announced the Leap X engine development program and extended the joint venture to 2040. The agreement ensured that engines in the 18,000 to 50,000 pound thrust class would be developed by CFM, with GE supplying the engine core and Safran aircraft engines providing the fan, booster, and low-pressure turbine.
The first LEAP-powered commercial flight took off in 2016 with Pegasus Airlines' Airbus A320neo. By 2019, the LEAP engine family had demonstrated remarkable success, offering up to 20% improvement in fuel efficiency compared to prior generation aircraft. With a 99.95% departure reliability rate, LEAP engines have helped reduce carbon dioxide II emissions by more than 35 million tons. In 2021, the CFM-56 engine family achieved its billionth flight hour after 37 years of service across six models, boasting a 99.98% departure reliability rate. The same year, the revolutionary innovation for sustainable engines, RISE, program was unveiled, aiming to develop technologies for at least 20% more fuel-efficient flight. As Gail Mahust, president and CEO of CFM International, states, as CFM celebrates its 50th anniversary, we are acting on our clear ambition to make air transport more sustainable. With the RISE program, CFM will once again change the way that people fly. Today, CFM International stands as the most prolific jet propulsion company in aviation history, with over 54,000 engines ordered and more than 42,500 delivered. CFM 56 engines power more than 14,650 commercial and military aircraft across more than 650 operators, while LEAP engines power more than 3,500 aircraft for nearly 160 operators, marking an unprecedented legacy in aviation technology. Now, do you think GE and CFM will remain the largest manufacturers of aircraft engines in the next few decades? Let us know in the comments. Please like and share the videos and subscribe to the channel. Please also take our memberships to encourage us.